everybody, this is Randy with Carchaeology, and today's adventure is a little more effort on our baby rose here, the 1956 Imperial. So as you can see, we have a bit of a tire issue. Now, believe it or not, these tires were brand new tires when this car was put in storage by the previous owner. I mean, good intentions don't always come out the way they should. Uh, and unfortunately, these tires, even though they still have little nipples on them and everything, they have gone completely bad, totally dry. They are junk, won't hold air, and we're stuck. But fortunately, these sort of tires are available today. There are companies such as Coker that have taken the old molds from different tire companies and are remanufacturing these tires using modern rubber. And there's also some vintage tires that uh, are done with modern technology, radial tires and stuff with, still with a big white wall. Now, since this is a vintage car, it's a very original car, and it's probably not something that's gonna see a whole lot of road use, I decided to go back with the bias ply style tire as what would have been on it when it was new. And this is a four inch white wall, an L7815. They've got the blue protective coating on there, which we will clean off. But let's get a set of these things mounted up and bolted onto our baby and see how she looks. The blue stuff comes off fairly easy. Uh, I found that uh, you just soak it with a little bit of water. It's kind of a soapy kind of a thing to begin with. You don't need to use any sort of crazy uh, stuff and you want to make sure that you're cleaning it off with something that's fairly clean as well because those white wall tires um, can certainly get messy. So give it a good little soak, a nice little uh, scrub brush here. i to pull that stuff off of there. Fantastic. Now, fortunately, the previous owner had these wheels restored, uh, and so I didn't have to deal with any sort of rust or having to paint anything that was there, and that's making mounting certainly easier, and they're gonna look fantastic on the car. Looks like we're missing a couple lug nuts here, too. Definitely gotta sort that out. Now, one thing of note, on a lot of these early Mopar cars is there's actually a right hand and a left hand thread depending on what side of the car you're working on. So definitely make sure not to get your nuts mixed up. Uh, looks like I also need to uh, put a cotter pin in through that that castle nut there. But uh, realistically I'm going to be pulling these wheels back off of here shortly uh, to tend to brakes and things like that. Um, so I don't need to worry about it too much. We're just going for aesthetics at the moment. Hey, dog. Don't eat the lug nuts, okay? No. All right, let's uh, pop the subcap on here. Looking good. Where are you going with that? Freya, don't eat the lug nuts. You'll see the remnants of the original sticker on there. You know, if you're going to do work on a car like this, you need to finish it. Get the car going. Get it on the road. To let it sit like this, well, it just seems like such a waste. Now, hopefully this car, once I get it all up and running and that sort of thing, it won't suffer a similar fate. I hope that wherever it goes when I'm done with it is someplace where it will be driven and enjoyed and shared. But it's not good to let them sit, people. You can't let it do it. It's good, not good for the car. It's not good for the parts. It's not good for our world. Got to dig them up. Got to drive them. Got to have some fun with them. Wow. Talk about a massive difference. You get some new tires on a car like this, and it just makes it 
stand right out. Your eye is so drawn to the wheels on a car. It's such a focal point for them. If you've got real clean wheels and tires, it can make all the difference in the world. So that was an expensive thing to add to the car, but it was something that definitely needed to be done. And now I'm gonna continue with some of the cleaning pro process. Uh, every time I come out here, the car is so big, I feel like I need to touch something. Uh, so after putting the wheels and tires on, I came in here and started polishing some of the chrome, trying to get the window frames cleaned up, get the glass cleaned up. I actually put a battery in it here today too, and I'm gonna test some of the electricals. And these rear windows are actually a really cool marvel to watch work. So check this out here. Did you check that out? Did you see it? That rear window piece folds forward while the forward piece goes down. That is pretty slick. Check it out. It's pretty cool, huh? She's like, get me out of here. Well, let's go for a ride. And I definitely need to spend some time in here cleaning up the dash. It's going to be pretty fun. I did uh, put in a battery now, so I can check and see if we've got some lights. Let's go around back and see if those taillights are lit up. <laughs> Damn, that is cool. Totally cool. Like we even got a license plate light. This one here. Come on, baby. Gonna have to check a check a bulb in that one. But that one's lit up. That is the coolest, craziest tail light ever, I think. It really is. Everything about this car is so design driven. Look at that shifter controller, push buttons. The uh, handbrake handle here. Crazy, crazy shape. Even the switches are awesome. Heater, defrost, thigh off. Okay, then. The gauges, the steering wheel with its little thumb rests. Pretty cool. A little ribbed for your satisfaction. Check out the uh, radio here with town and country switch. Even the ashtray is not an ashtray. It's an ash receiver. So rad. And all of this is going to clean up really amazing. It's it's dirty, definitely nasty from sitting, but uh, I can't wait to get in here with a little bit of polish and and uh, give her a buff. Because all of that's going to be beautiful. Yes, Pearl, I heard that. You're next. I promise. <laughs>